Hey there, what is up guys? My name is Caleb, welcome to my new video. And today we are gonna be talking about Ivy League style and why that might be the right style for you. So I think Ivy League style is really, really perfect for people who feel drawn to a more sophisticated and regimented and somewhat uh, uniform style, but want to experiment with something that is more interesting, has really deep historical roots, and really comes with a lot of meaning, and can also be experimented with, and there, if you're looking for something with a lot of artfulness in it as well, and if you kind of fall into that category, then Ivy League might be great for you. So I think this style is a great alternative to something like the more traditional menswear style that is often popular. You see on a lot of those uh, famous YouTubers or those Instagram style pages. I'm sure I'm putting up pictures right here for you guys to see. Um, or also the more uh, like Silicon Valley tech bro. It's a great alternative to that style that you see a lot of people wearing as well. Um, that's because it offers a lot of the same characteristics, but with much more depth and what is in my opinion, a much more interesting overall look. So Ivy League style originated obviously from Ivy League colleges uh, all the ways up in the early 1900s, coming to really a head in the 1950s and the 1960s especially. And it can really be broken down into a specific arsenal of pieces and that is what allows it to be such an iconic and easily recognizable style. So this canon of different pieces are what make Ivy League style so great for someone who wants a more traditional menswear or uniform style because you can just go down this list buying what you think are the best version of each of these pieces for you and then you can take them and uh, swap them in and out because this style is made out of individual pieces that are extremely interchangeable. So to get right into it, the one and the most recognizable part of Ivy League style has to be a pair of penny loafers. You can also opt for tassel loafers or other kinds of loafers. I would opt to stay away from something like driving moccasins. The most casual I would go is with an actual pair of leather moccasins. Loafers were invented in the 1930s. The most iconic version, of course, is made by the GH Bass Company with their Weegeons loafers. The Logan loafer is, I think, the most uh, historically accurate to the original model and the most popular model. You can also see uh, penny loafers and other kinds of loafers made from a wide variety of different uh, manufacturers. However, the one thing I would look for is to make sure you're not buying loafers that are too sleek and have a profile with a curved or pointed toe. Personally, I think that's really ugly and it goes into more of a modern and menswear contemporary style and less of the original Ivy League style. To achieve the Ivy League style, you want a pair with an elegant but rounded toe with a bit more of a solid structure all the way throughout. Uh, basically, if you look at the Weegeons loafer, you can then look up or down in the pay scale for something that looks similar that best fits your budget and your preferences. So next in line out of what are the three most important pieces to the Ivy League style is gonna be the OCBD shirt. So that stands for the Oxford cloth button down. So these are very, very popular in uh, all kinds of styles today, but specifically in the Ivy League style. So Oxford cloth is special compared to what is uh, more commonly used for shirts like dress shirts, which is called broad cloth. And so this Oxford cloth is usually made with a uh, thicker knit. And so because of that, it looks more casual and it often has the button down collar. A uh, fun fact is that that is the difference between a button up shirt and a button down shirt is that if a shirt has the button down collar, then it's a button down. And if it doesn't, then it would be a button up. So next up going into here is going to be the navy blazer. So these are specifically made usually with these gold buttons. And so you'll see a lot of the times that's how they're worn. Uh, for a lot of people that might be a bit intimidating. So you can always opt for something a tad more casual. Personally though, I think if you are wearing the whole ensemble that they don't, they are not too loud and they are really designed to integrate well with the whole rest of the style. And so wearing them may seem intimidating at first, be integrated more easily into your style at, perhaps at a later point. So the next thing you would wanna consider are suits. So for the winter and the colder months, the main things you're gonna to wanna to look at are herringbone suits and tweed suits. So these will both be made out of a thicker wool. They're very casual looking. They're great for everyday occasions and they're usually gonna be in more earth tones or more subtle tones, uh, maybe even some shades of gray and white. And so all of these are extremely neutral and go with lots of things and really fit with the colder, more fall and winter look. 
and these uh, can also be worn with other more neutral colored pieces later on in the year. You can break them into separates, which is something Ivy League is really well known for, perhaps wearing with different colored chinos or uh, other types of pants by taking those jackets. Or you can always, of course, opt for a more casual jacket on top of the thicker and warmer pants for other parts of the year when you'd like to mix and match. For summer, I would recommend uh, what is really popular is Seersucker and Madras. These are both uh, older and very, very storied fabrics, but they find their home uh, in a very unique way inside of the Ivy League style. And they're a great counterpart to the herringbone wool and to the flannel that you see during the winter. And I think that by buying these suits, just like the prior more winter fabrics, you can very easily mix and match these to fit into a wide variety of different occasions. So uh, next up, there's going to be uh, chinos. So chinos come in a wide variety of different fabrics. I would specifically say when you're starting out looking into Ivy League style, these would fit best uh, in more neutral earth tones. And then as you build up a collection, you can move into colors like uh, blue or green or even some more colorful colors. Nantucket red is very, very popular and even uh, yellow. These are great because they can uh, be interchanged with a lot of the other pieces that I was already talking about, like your navy blazer and all of the previously mentioned suit tops could be taken and worn with many different color pairs of chinos which will result in overall an extremely wide variety of different outfits that can be put together. So another one of the final pieces of this really uh, important Ivy League pantheon is going to be the rep and the knit tie. The knit tie is a bit more casual. We usually be made out of something like uh, silk or cotton. And then you see the rep ties are these diagonally striped ties, often used to indicate specifically which colleges people would go to. Uh, nowadays, that's not as important and anyone can wear any color of tie. It's just really whatever goes best with your preferences. These are both really iconic uh, casual ties that really fit well into the Ivy League style. So these all are specific pieces that draw these references from the lifestyles that these students were living on these prestigious uh, Northeastern University campuses. And because of that, these are a unique mixture of both look and function. You have to think about that these guys who are wearing these styles were often uh, coming from you, the, the people who were wearing these styles were often coming from very prestigious families and they were often uh, the highest achievers in their areas, you know, ending up in these large Ivy League schools, competing in sports like crew and football and uh, many other higher class so-called sports, which are now obviously maybe not viewed the same way. But the great thing is that arising from this uh, interesting storied past, comes this really iconic and now in our modern age relatively affordable and very easily worn style that can be worn across an extremely wide variety of occasions. I would say in almost every single occasion outside of those requiring the most absolute formality, you with a basic Ivy League wardrobe, uh, you would be able to put together outfits that would fit well into every single situation possible. So one of the great things about Ivy League style is since it is so old and it is uh, very much now a vintage and a very specific look, you can very easily take pieces and exchange them in and swap them out. Take pieces that were not originally part of the Ivy look, but integrate them in very, very easily. And they look extremely nice. You'll see this a lot from a lot of guys in Japan and other parts of Asia who are into an overall Japanese Americana style. And they will often take their main inspiration from Ivy and they will add in pieces of workwear and militaria and sportswear that maybe came either earlier or later in time, but they take these and integrate them to make a really interesting uh, personal style. So one of the first pieces that is really important that you would want to consider is going to be a pair of jeans. I think fitting with the fit and the style of jeans that was popular at the time, you could go with the regular uh, Levi's shrink to fit jeans or a, any of their wide variety of different Levi's vintage clothing jeans. Although if I had to make any choice, I would go with something like Orslo. I like a lot of their raw denim, but they also do a wide variety of different stone washes that can be extremely appealing as well as their very popular one wash jeans and I really like their jeans and I think they fit the overall uh, silhouette and look for the Ivy League style very well. Some other things I've seen people integrate into Ivy League looks that I have really, really enjoyed have been pieces like uh, military herringbone twill olive pants. 
I've seen these in specific outfits and they often look really great. They mix up the classic look of what you think you're gonna get and they really change the texture of the chinos you would be expecting to see in an Ivy League style and really kind of subvert your expectations and they lead to a really unique style that can be uh, very easily replicated. Another thing I really like are sneakers, but I specifically prefer the look of navy deck shoe reproductions, specifically from brands like The Real McCoys. I'll show a few pictures here. I think that the overall more rugged look of these helps kind of break up the style. And I think what it does is it incorporates a kind of unique style called heavy duty and kind of a more thick and rugged style that was also very popular at one point as an imitation of American style in Japan. And I think it melds very well into the more casual side of Ivy League style. And so moving on, I do wanna talk a little bit more about incorporating these pieces specifically from the heavy duty style. I think things that would fit also extremely well mixed into a wardrobe like this would be type two denim jackets, uh, white t-shirts similar to this one I'm wearing from uh, Mr. Freedom. This is the Stanley shirt. And I also think that you could incorporate military over shirts and the Red Wing 875 uh, mock toe boots. And so these are all pieces that would be more indicative of this more heavy duty and a very, very American casual workwear style. But I think it can be incorporated extremely well into a more classic Ivy League style. I specifically really enjoy the way this guy here incorporates different Ivy League styles with more casual and Americana styles as well. I wanted to make this quick video for anyone who's looking into changing styles or perhaps adapting their style. If you are led towards a more uniform or a more regimented style, I think the Ivy League is a really great basis to start from to kind of build up your overall closet and then you can pick specific pieces that you enjoy and slowly incorporate them until you have your own personal unique style over time. So that's gonna be the end of my video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is something I've been wanting to talk about for a little while and I feel like I was finally able to put kind of all my thoughts together in one concise video. Uh, it was quick. If you'd like me to do a more in-depth video on any of these topics in the future, just let me know. If you want to see some people with a great Ivy League style, you can just look at the J Press Clothiers Instagram page, or specifically, I personally really enjoy Ken's Fashion Journey, which is a YouTube channel. He's a man from Malaysia who is extremely into Ivy League style, and I really, really love his videos. He has a great attitude, and his videos are extremely fun. Um, so that's going to be it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Later.